Welcome back. So, today we go on to the last segment of this course uh, which deals with the financial applications of path integrals. But before we get into that we need some prerequisites and one of them is going to be Eto's lemma which enables us to do calculus uh, of functions of stochastic variables. So, let us get into that, let us get into the Eto's lemma. Eto's lemma says that if we have a function g x t where x is a stochastic variable and this function is uh, uh, continuous and at least twice differentiable, uh, the function the variable x is stochastic and t is of course time uh, and uh, we can express x uh, in terms of the expression that is given in the slide d x is equal to the stochastic differential equation d x is equal to a x t d t plus b x t d w. Remember d w is the infinitesimal Brownian motion increment, um, t of course as I mentioned is the time and uh, then the total derivative of g can be expressed by the expression given in the red box at the bottom of the slide. The proof is uh, not uh, too involved, it is quite simple in fact. Uh, we consider a continuous and differentiable function, twice differentiable at least function g x t of x and t where x is given by the expression that we I mentioned just now and that is given here in the um, red box. Uh, and uh, we expand uh, g uh, as a Taylor series. When we expand g as a Taylor series, we get the expression that is given in the red box here, knowing that g is a function of x and t. The uh, most of the terms uh, are simple, uh, and we retain terms only of the first order in dt, but the important term which uh, which we need to analyze is the term that uh, involves the second derivative of g with respect to x that is the term involving the square of dx dx whole squared that term needs to have a look and let us get into that. So, dx square is given by the expression in the red box here dx square is equal to ax t dt plus b x t d w t whole squared. Now, when we do the squaring and of course, d w is nothing but the Brownian motion increment and therefore, it can be written as z under root d t where z is the standard normal variate. And this is we have discussed it uh, when we talked about Brownian motion or so, some time back. So, when we open up the square, uh, the expression that we get is b square z square dt for the squaring of the first term, uh, for the squaring of the second term, I am sorry, and other terms are of order uh, dt uh, square or um, uh, are higher orders in dt. In other words, let me repeat when I square open the square of this particular expression given in the blue box here, the one term that is linear in dt is the expression that I get is b square z square dt that is by squaring the second term and the other terms are of higher orders in dt than the linear term. Now, let us look at this term. Uh, of course, uh, the higher order terms in dt we shall be ignoring. So, we not, need not carry them forward in the analysis. Uh, we need to study uh, and uh, review the term b square z square dt. Now, the expectation value of z square uh, where z is the standard normal variate is given by 1 um, and therefore, the expectation value of b square z square dt is nothing but b square dt. Uh, and the expectation value of z square being 1 as shown in the um, yellow box here. Now, talking about the variance of z square, the variance of z square is 2, uh, it can be shown um, by uh, working out the uh, using the normal distribution and the variance of z square turns out to be 2 and therefore, the variance of b square z square dt turns out to be 2 b to the power 4 d t square. Now, the important point is the variance of a stochastic variable in time d t in an infinitesimal time d t has to be proportional to d t and not d t square. But what we find here is that the variance of variance of this term e uh, variance of this term b square z square d t turns out to be of the order of d t square. 
and that means what? Because we are talking about infinite decimal times, that means the variance is very small. Variance is much smaller than what is expected if the uh, the process um, or if this expression b square is d t and the b square d t if this expression or b square z square d t rather if this expression were to be a stochastic variable. Uh, had it been a stochastic variable the variance would should have been of the order of d t in time d t. However, the variance is found to be of the order of d t square which is very very small and therefore and therefore, uh, to first approximation we can take the variance to be 0 and as such we can assume that b square z square d t uh, is uh, deterministic uh, and uh, carries the value b square d t. So, that is the logic behind this and uh, that means, uh, uh, that means at the end of the day what we have is that this squared component this entire expression which is nothing but d x square uh, uh, contributes a value contributes an expression a deterministic expression a non random expression equal to b square d t. And because its expectation is b square d t and its variance is close to 0 or close uh, insignificant by the parameters or by the yardstick that we are evaluating a stochastic process. So, substituting this expression here for d x square and retaining terms or to first order in d t what we have is the expression given in the red box here and which is called Ito's lemma. So, we have here an expression for the total derivative of a, a function of a stochastic variable uh, with an explicit time dependence and uh, this the term the coefficient of uh, d t is called the drift coefficient and the coefficient of dw is called the diffusion coefficient. Now, we come to the stock price distribution. Now, stock price distribution we shall be talking about uh, is basically a model which is which is known by the Black Scholes model in fact, but uh, it epitomizes the price processes of most of the financial assets with variations. And this is the fundamental process, the simplest process that is uh, uh, and that meets to a reasonable rigor the, the empirical data and um, it is uh, it forms the uh, basis or the underlying of the Black Scholes model of option valuation or contingent claim valuation that we shall be talking about uh, in due course. So, let us now get into the stock price uh, behavior or the stock price distribution or the modeling of the stock price howsoever you may like to represent it. Uh, first of all the fundamental thing is that the stock prices are assumed to follow a Markov process and this uh, pro particular property is in tandem with or is in conjunction with is compatible with consistent with the weak form of market efficiency. What does the weak, weak form of market efficiency say? The weak form of market efficiency says that the current market price, the current market price, and, uh, price encapsulates the entire past history and therefore, the current market price is the relevant information that is useful valuable uh, or should be considered for predicting future prices. That is what is the definition of a markup process indeed and that is what uh, enables us to uh, classify stock price as a, a markup process. Now, we have two axioms on the basis of which we do the modeling of stock prices uh, which we believe that a rational investor should obey on and which are supported to a large extent by empirical analysis. The first one is that the expected percentage return required by investors over an infinitesimal time period small time period d t uh, from a stock is independent of the stock's price. Let me repeat the expected percentage return required by investors. Uh, over an infinitesimal time period d t small time period from a stock is independent of the stock price. In other words, uh, the if an investor requires a 10 percent or a 15 percent or a particular return from a stock when its price is x, it, it requires the same return when the price is 
why uh, the the re return uh, over infinitesimal time period is independent of the prevailing market price of the stock. The second argument or the second axiom that uh, is uh, accepted as uh, part of rational behavior is that the variance of the percentage change in pr stock price, the variance of the percentage change in stock price in time d t is independent of the stock price. Again, what we are simply trying to say is that an investor is just as uncertain of percentage return when the stock price is say x as when he when the stock price is y. So, that uncertainty in the in the stock price or the stock return uh, or the stock price or the stock return uh, is uh, uh, independent of the prevailing stock price. Uh, these two axioms combined together form the fundamental model of stock price which is carried forward into the Black Scholes option pricing model. So, how does it translate into mathematics? How does how do these uh, two axioms uh, develop into a differential equation or a stochastic differential equation? Let us see. The first axiom is what? The first axiom is that the expected percentage change uh, a percentage return, the expected percentage return required by investors from stock in infinitesimal time d t is in constant and independent of the stock price. The expected return is given by over, over time d t is given by the expression in the red box here e in the in the square brackets here 1 upon d t uh, 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 into the percentage change d s upon s d s upon s is the percentage change you divide it by the time period you get the percentage change per unit time which is the uh, expected return uh, and this return he says uh, it says the axiom says is independent of the price and therefore we call it mu and that enables us to write e uh, or the expected change percentage change in price that enables us to write the expected change in price over time d t as mu d t because d t is non stochastic. And that enables us to write d s upon s as mu d t plus some random term some stochastic term which has a 0 mean. Then we come to the second axiom. The second axiom is that the variability of the percentage change in stock price in a short period of time d t is the same irrespective of the stock price. This gives us the condition that is given in the red box here. The standard deviation of the percentage change in stock price d s upon x can be written as sigma under root d t. So, combining the two combining the expression that is given here in the red box and the expression that is given in this slide in the red box. Uh, we can write this percentage change in the stock price uh, over time d t where d t is infinitesimal uh, in the form that is given in the green box right at the bottom of your slide. Remember uh, just to um, recall d w is the infinitesimal uh, Brownian motion increment and therefore, it can be written as z under root d t z is the uh, unit normal variate. Now, this is the stochastic the expression that we have obtained here in the green box is the stochastic, is the stochastic differential equation governing the or de describing the stock price defining the stock price. Uh, what does it translate in terms of the probability distribution of stock prices? How does it or what is the probability distribution of stock prices corresponding to the stochastic distribution a stochastic differential equation? Now, there are two ways of going into this. One way is simply to apply the Ito equation and the other way to go into this is through the Fokker Planck equation. We shall consider both of them. Let us start with the Ito equation. And this, and this approach is uh, relatively simplistic. Uh, we write g as log of s uh, and uh, where s is given by the, the expression that is given here in the red box uh, in the green box I am sorry uh, and that can be written in the form d s is equal to mu s t t plus sigma s z under root d w or you can also write it as um, d s is equal to mu s d t sigma s uh, z under root d t or mu s d t plus sigma s d w either way 
um, you can uh, write it in uh, on depending on how you choose to represent the stochastic term infinitesimal stochastic increment. Uh, so, uh, writing g as log s we get the first derivative of g with respect to s as 1 upon s and we get the second derivative of g with respect to s as minus 1 upon x s is squared. And of course, the derivative of g with respect to time is 0 because there is no explicit time dependence in g with uh, when we define g as log of s. And substituting this in the in the Ito equation, what we get is the expression given in the yellow box here d g that is d log of x is equal to mu minus sigma square upon 2 d t plus sigma d w. Uh, we can write this as this this clearly shows that the that the uh, log of the uh, stock price the increment or the change in the log of the stock price has a mean of mu minus 1 by 2 sigma square and, d, and dt. We can write d log of s as log of s t minus log of s 0 and that enables us to write an expression for the probability distribution of log of s s t. The log of s t is uh, then following normal distribution with a mean of log of s 0 plus mu minus sigma square upon t uh, sigma square upon 2 I am sorry into t and a variance of sigma square t that is obtained by integrating this uh, uh, differential equation between the limits um, um, s, s 0 and s t and there we thereafter we get this expression log s t minus s 0 is equal to mu minus sigma square upon 2 t plus uh, sigma w t and uh, that implies that implies that log of s t is normally distributed with a mean of log s 0 plus mu minus sigma square upon t and a variance of sigma square t which is the expression that is shown in the green box right at the bottom of this slide. Now, what about now this is the expression for the for the price, this is the probability distribution of the logarithm of the price uh, log of s t. We have obtained the probability distribution for the log of s t. Now, we obtain the probability distribution for the logarithmic return. Uh, we write x equal to 1 upon t log s t upon s 0. This is the definition of logarithmic return, the expression in the red box here. This is the expression for the logarithmic return and this clear uh, knowing the that uh, log s t follows the distribution that is given in the um, blue box here normal distribution with a mean of log s 0 plus mu minus 1 by 2 sigma square t variance of sigma square t. Uh, we can immediately obtain the distribution followed by x where x is the logarithmic return x follows the normal distribution with a mean of mu minus 1 by 2 sigma square and a variance of sigma square upon t that is uh, it's straight away obtained by uh, setting the log s 0 to the left hand side and, and then dividing throughout by t. Now, uh, just uh, uh, an issue about logarithmic return. In this slide, I have tried to show that uh, the return that we have talked about uh, in this uh, presentation uh, so far uh, in an earlier slide is the basically a first order approximation of logarithmic return. This can be easily seen when you follow the sequence of uh, uh, computations given in the uh, in this slide. We have x is equal to 1 upon d t log s, s d t upon s 0 uh, that is equal to 1 upon d t log 1 plus s t t minus s 0 upon s 0 s t t minus s 0 is nothing but d s. So, we put d s here and then we expand the expression in 1 plus x uh, log 1 plus x form and retain the first order term and that is nothing but the expression for the return that is in, uh, sometimes termed as the arithmetic return the change in price 
per unit time that is uh, what we normally use when we talk about return on a financial asset. So, this is the relationship in this particular slide what I have tried to so show the viewers is the relationship between the logarithmic return and the uh, arithmetic return that uh, that is usually uh, um, is presented in the literature on uh, financial instruments. So, this is where we stand at the moment. The our stock price model is given in the red box here. Now, the Fokker Planck, now the second approach that I mentioned involves the Fokker Planck equation. If we write down the Fokker Planck equation corresponding to the stochastic differential equation that is given in the red box here, we get the expression that is given in the blue box here. Um, the solution to this uh, Fokker Planck equation that is given in the blue box here is uh, written out uh, in the green box here and we shall follow it, uh, but uh, we shall touch upon it in a sense uh, in the following slides, uh, but uh, a little bit quickly because of paucity of time. Uh, so, let us get into the, this. Uh, let me repeat the red box gives us the stochastic differential equation or the Langevin form equation for the stock price. The blue box represents the Fokker Planck equation that corresponds to that stochastic differential equation of the red box and the green box is the solution to the Fokker Planck equation that we shall show in the sequel. Now, this is the uh, abbreviated form of the Fokker Planck equation that uh, I had shown in the previous slide, where the conditional probability P s t subject to s dash t dash is simply uh, abbreviated as P uh, and uh, the rest is same. So, that is there in the red box here. Uh, on simplification, on carrying out the different uh, differentiations. Uh, of the various terms here. Uh, the uh, above red box equation uh, simplifies to the equation that is given in the blue box here. And the boundary conditions at t equal to t dash p s t uh, s dash t dash is equal to delta s minus s dash is quite straightforward uh, boundary condition. If t is equal to t dash then s must be equal to s dash and if s is equal to 0 then p 0 t s dash t dash must be equal to 0. That means, the stock price if it is non 0 to start with it will never reach 0 uh, and uh, s tending to infinity p s t s dash t dash tends to 0. That means, the stock price cannot be unbounded in a finite interval. So, these, these are the boundary conditions. The conditions that are specified in the green box here constitute the boundary conditions. The expression in the blue box here represents the equation that needs to be solved subject to the boundary conditions. Let us see how to do it. The first step is to do a change in variables. We write uh, uh, this is the justification of the uh, boundary conditions so, which I have already mentioned. So, uh, the viewers can go through it. Now, we make the substitutions of changes in variables which are given in the red box here. The, the impact of this change in variables uh, as you can see here is that the coefficients of the various differential um, um, derivatives are now independent of the uh, s uh, or, uh, um, or, the, uh, or the independent variables x in this case it is x. So, the coefficients of all the derivatives are now independent of x. We have uh, d f upon d tau is equal to d square f upon d x square plus 3 minus k d f upon d x plus 2 minus k into f. So, uh, every coefficient is independent of x. The boundary conditions also get modified due to the transformation of variables and are given in the yellow box and the green box at the bottom of the slide. Now, we convert this uh, equation that we have uh, here uh, in the blue box here. We convert this equation uh, into a diffusion equation. In order to convert this into the diffusion equation, we need that the, that the coefficients of the first order derivatives and the coefficient of x should vanish. We do that by introducing a new variable um, g x tau which is uh, and free variables alpha and beta expressed 
uh, by the equation given in the red box here, where alpha and beta are free variables to be determined by us in such a way that we get the that we get the diffusion equation. And uh, when we make the substitutions, uh, we get the required values of alpha and beta that that enable us to convert this equation to a different uh, diffusion equation given by the expression uh, uh, here in the red box and the blue box. Alpha becomes equal to 1 by 2 into k by 3 and beta becomes equal to alpha square plus 3 minus k alpha plus 2 minus k that is equal to minus 1 by 4 k minus 1 squared. And when we substitute these values of alpha and beta, we end up with the diffusion equation that is given in the yellow box here and the boundary conditions also get modified accordingly in terms of the uh, in terms of the variable g now the solution of the differential e diffusion equation is i'm sorry the solution of the diffusion equation is quite straightforward it can be done uh, by fourier uh, approach or, or by uh, using laplace transforms by using fourier transforms uh, it's uh, a straightforward exercise uh, and the result that we get and, and in fact we have done this earlier in one of the earlier lectures I recall and the result that we get is the expression that is given in the red box here. Uh, reverting back to our original variables uh, in uh, step wise uh, what we end up with is the expression that is given here in this slide. We get the expression for the conditional probability P S T subject to S dash T dash as the expression given uh, in the in the bottom equation on this slide and we, which we clearly recognize which we immediately recognize as a, a pdf of a uh, log normal distribution pdf of a log normal distribution so this endorses the fact uh, or vindicates the fact that the stock prices follow a log normal distribution and and this in fact this is uh, this is uh, this makes it more explicit if I substitute xi equal to log x and, and the expression that I get is the expression that I get here that, that is uh, in a sense the logarithm of the price. The logarithm of the price follows a normal distribution as you can see this is the pdf of the normal distribution. Now, just uh, since we have talked about the log normal distribution, just a word about the log normal distribution. Uh, how do we define log normal distribution? Well, if x is log normal, if x is a random variable and if x follows a log normal distribution or x is log normally distributed with a pdf uh, p x, then y equal to log x is normally distributed that is the definition of log normal distribution. If x is log normally distributed then log of x is normally distributed that is the definition of uh, log normal distribution. So, let us find the pdf of the log normal distribution. We have y is, is as I mentioned y equal to log x is normally distributed and we assume that y is is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma square. Remember mu and sigma square are the parameters of log x not of x. x is log normally distributed log x equal to y is normally distributed and it is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma square and of course, the, the pdf of y would be given by this expression that is in the red box here that is well known. Now, the probability that my random variable x lies between an uh, infinitesimal interval x and x plus dx is given by px dx where px is the probability density function of x. So, it is uh, the probability that uh, my random variable x lies between x and x plus t x is given by p x t x and that is also equal to p log of x is less than x is less than log x is less than log x plus t x because log x is a monotonic function of x. So, if x is less if uh, x lies or uh, the random variable x lies between x and x plus t x then log of the random variable log x uh, capital X also lies between log small x and log small x plus t x. But log small x is nothing but small y log 
capital Y as the random variable Y and uh, we write log X plus dx as Y plus dy and this is nothing but P y dy or rho y dy whatever you may like to take. So, so this expression P, uh, carrying on the equalities uh, this is equal to uh, substituting y equal to log x we have P log of x uh, into dy dy can be written as log x plus dx minus log x uh, because dy can be written as y plus dy minus y and that can be written as x plus log x plus dx minus log x and uh, in simplifying this and uh, taking uh, we get the expression p of log x into log 1 plus dx upon x uh, which is of the form 1 plus x and which can be written up to first order as p log x into dx upon x and which has the probability distribution given as the last expression on the bottom of this slide. So, this is the probability density function of, of log of x because uh, this uh, dx and this dx will cancel out this dx and dx will cancel out and what we are left with is px. So, px is equal to 1 upon x under root 2 pi sigma square exponential minus log x minus mu whole square upon 2 sigma square. This is the probability density function of the log normal distribution. The mean and variance of the log normal distributions are easy to calculate. Uh, they are straightforward exercises in, in calculus, uh, simple integration. So, I will not go through them in detail. I put them in the presentation for the convenience of the viewers, uh, but the results that we get is that the mean is equal to exponential mu plus sigma square upon 2, but please recall mu and sigma square are the parameters of log of x and not of x. So, this is the mean and the variance uh, the expression for the variance is given here in this slide um, in the red box here and these, ex these um, the expressions in the yellow box and the blue box and the green box are the corresponding expressions when these are applied to the black scholes model or the stock price model that we are in investigating for the moment. Thank you. We will continue after the break.